Hello and welcome. I am Anku Goel and this is the third episode of Life's True Value, a special walk the talk series where together with the top guns of the corporate world, we try to understand the true value of experience through unique perspectives. We invite these esteemed guests to explain the elusive concept of return on experience or ROX and its intricate connection with luxurious residential properties. <music> Return on experience is among the top priorities for the corporate leaders these days. They are investing a huge amount of time and resources to improve the ROX for their customers and people. So it is only logical when they are investing in a residential property, they would seek to maximize their ROX. Contemporary aesthetics, ultra advanced amenities and breathtaking views. These residential properties have it all. But why do penny-wise people like corporate hotshots pour their fortunes into these homes? Is it to just make a statement or do they really feel there's some connection between one's place of living and their productivity? Join us as we solve these mysteries with our distinguished guest, a BFSI veteran with over 25 years of financial acumen. It gives me immense pleasure to extend a very warm welcome to our guest of this episode, Mr. Vignesh Shahane. An ex Ranji player, a people's man and a seasoned insurance professional, Mr. Vignesh Shahane is the CEO and Managing Director of EG's Federal Life Insurance. An alumnus of prestigious Narsimhanji Institute of Management Studies, Mr. Shahane is credited with elevating Aegis Federal Life Insurance to the rank among the top 10 insurance companies in the country. He joined the company in 2014 and with his unconventional approach, deeper connect with the audience and emphasis on the values like integrity, dedication and accountability. He transformed it from a loss-making firm to a highly profitable venture. In his illustrious career, he has worked in consumer banking and life insurance across diverse geographies, varied markets and multiple customer segments. He has worked with well-known financial organizations like ANZ Grindley's and Standard Chartered Bank in India, and of course, the Maastricht Bank in UAE. He is also a key member and speaker at prominent industry platforms like CII, Asocham, and FICI. It is a rare opportunity to understand the concept of return on experience and its intricate connection to one's place of living. And who better can we have than a distinguished guest today, Mr. Vignesh Sahani, to help us understand the whole idea about return on experience and his experience around that. Thank you so much, Vignesh, sir, for joining us today. Thanks it for having me. It's a pleasure to have you for this episode. Thank you. Getting straight to the point, I would like to speak with you. You are someone who has been in this whole industry of insurance or finance, if I can say so, for decades now. And having excelled there and being in the leadership position, I think you might have cracked into the nitty gritties of understanding this buzzword, if I can say, return on experience. Can you just help me understand a little bit what it means to you? I think as a customer, every customer at the heart is looking for the experience he gets out of a brand. Yes. It's not as much how much he pays for it or what he gets in return. Okay. It's the experience of buying and experiencing that brand, which is all important. I can ask you as a customer, you've been a customer many times. Yes. Don't you look for experience, whether you fly in a flight or whether you buy something or I, whether I you buy a dress. It adds on to the value that I've it's, spent It's on. the experience that counts and people are waking, waking up to this now. Yes. People are waking up, it's not so much about pricing, it's about creating an overall experience right from the point you buy to the point to the after sale mm -hmm. service. It's the entire experience basket which is so important to, to get customers, to retain customers and to get more and more customers. Every company is now focusing on the experience they have customers. Yes. It could be insurance, it could be banking, it could be an FMCG, it could be an airline but it's all about the experience. So it is an important term that we have cracked. I think it's the most important thing. thing. And how, how do you think now it has started relating to the whole idea of residential properties and the living space we buy or we choose to live in? I think the place we choose to live in, yes. not, not invest in, not invest in, makes a big difference because you spend about eight to 10 hours at work at, yes. at, at in your place of residence. You have to be in a good state of mind to play your best game, to provide your customers or employees with the best experience. You can't, you can't be unhappy 
and yet be productive or yet uh, yet or yet create a great experience for people. Sure. You have to be in a great state of mind. So I think living places play a very important role. Living places play an extremely important role in putting in the right state of mind. A living place should be, according to me, should be bright, should be airy, should have the amenities. What are the factors that you think would affect the ROX for you when you consider a living space? Are there some parameters or factors there as well that you say these are the things I definitely think should be there for me to choose that living space that gives a good experience or return on it? I think I need to sit in a gated community. I need yeah. to see people and be around people. I need top class amenities. I might not use them very often. I might not use the gym very often, but I want the gym to be top class. I yeah. want it to be top class whenever I decide to use it. I, I might not use the swimming pool very often, but I want the swimming pool to be world class when I decide to use it. Besides that, in my own house, I would the ROX would be created by a meditation room, a wow. workout room, a lot of bookshelves and a reclining chair where I can have an afternoon siesta. So these are the things, even if you're not using it all the time, but the But, but you want them, but you want them. You want them. The funny thing about creating experiences is you don't need to do it all the time. But when you decide to do it few and far between, it should give you that good experience. So, so when you choose your living spaces or the houses we say are luxurious, houses that we choose, it does matter to what kind of experience it wholesomely brings to you. Absolutely. Rather than individually, what do you do with it? Absolutely. Absolutely. So let me take you around and show sure. you some more experiential places to, yeah. in the property and see how, what kind of return sure, value you sure. create from it. So Vignesh, we are at the most uh, open space area in this property. It's the terrace area, the most attractive part of the whole property. How do you feel like? Uncle, yeah. this is, you know, when I stepped in, I said, what a wonderful place. Where in Bombay would you find so much space and a sea view to boot? In Bombay, you can't even find space to park your yeah, car. I mean, this is unheard of. This is really wonderful. If, if I ask you, which is your favorite, uh, you know, spot in a living space, which you would like to go to, to ease out, to burst your stress? Something like this. Yeah. Lot of space, greenery and a sea view. Sea I mean, view, that puts greenery, me in a perfect nature. state of mind for anything. True that. So how does Vignesh manage his mind? How does he manage the stress around in his work life and personal life? To you know, Uncle, it might sound a little counterintuitive to you and a little surprising, but I'm less stressed now than I was 12 years back before I became CEO. Wow. The reason being, everybody thinks that's high stress. Yeah, because The reason I being, I have 10 or 12 people who directly report to me, wow. who are competent, who are sincere, who are hardworking, who do all the heavy lifting. Yes, I have to take decisions. Yes. which will impact not only employees, but even their families. And all the buck stops at me. But I think all the heavy lifting is done by my team. So I'm, I'm pretty chill, as, I can, as you can make out now. I think you've managed people better to manage your stress. I think what I do is uh, you need to hire right. And once you hire right and train right, you need to empower people and delegate. Yes. And I think I'm fairly good at that. So I think uh, there's no greater motivation to an employee than empowerment. I think it comes from your state of mind, which I think is correlated again to where we were speaking about the living space having an impact on your mind. Absolutely. In your living space, which yeah. is that one area that you pick out as this is the place where I really like to be. Enjoy. My uh, workout room. Wow. Which has a treadmill, which has a yoga mat, which has a weights. And I'm feeling, whenever I'm feeling a little under the weather or less in energy, yeah. I go and have a quick workout and I feel better than I felt ever. It before. is an energy booster, it's fitness is right? The workout could be 15 minutes or 20 minutes. It doesn't yes. need to be a one hour workout. True. Just 10, 15, 20 minutes of jog or run or some yoga, and that puts me in the right state of mind. You know, as you were saying that the amenities that you look for should be in the best shape when you go there. That's right. So how important it has been for you, like if you go for your yoga or your work out that the space has to be really spelling or speaking of that opulence. So all this I do in my own house. So it doesn't need to be reeking of opulence. You okay. don't need to spend money to have a great experience. That's yeah. something I want to make clear. You can have a great experience without spending the kind of money. Things should be functional. And that's what I look at. I just want things to be functional. For example, I want my treadmill to be functional when yes. I started. So it can't just be looking elegant and a piece that it is can't not be looking working. elegant and not work. Not working. And in life, I do, I like going for runs because you don't depend on any gadgets for running. You just require a good pair of shoes, socks and the road ahead. We, we cannot miss out talking to you when you're talking about your run and fitness 
uh, interest on you having played the Ranji Trophy. That's right. Yeah. So we're speaking to a man who was a passionate cricketer to say so. So how do you That's balance right. or you bring that, you know, impact on your work life today? Do you see some relevance of sportsmanship in your life? Uncle, I'll tell you, I've said this to a lot of people. You know, whatever life lessons I learned through cricket on the cricket yes. field are more than I've learned in any boardroom or any classroom. Exactly. Cricket is why I am here today with you. I owe everything to cricket. It's I am what I am because of cricket and the life lessons I learned playing a team sport. Wow. In fact, I tell youngsters, play a team sport at any level. It teaches you a lot in life and gives you great life lessons which will stand you in good stead. So is that what you say, the team spirit that you've learned in cricket is what you put through your team uh, to get the maximum of your productivity and the work satisfaction Ab that they deserve? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, the first thing I told my employees when I had a town hall and I became CEO 10 years back was, mm. I'm going to run you like a sports team. I'm going to be frank. Like in a sports team, your captain tells you if you've done well, if you've not done well. It's only in corporates that we are socialistic. Yes. We give everybody a good rating. We never, we never frank with people. I, try, I believe in open, honest communication. Yeah, I believe in meritocracy. And that's how sports teams are run. Successful sports teams. And, and I believe in... Complete engagement. That's how successful sports team. And I think are. they get more chances to even fail with your yeah. leadership. If you make a mistake, this. no problems. But don't repeat a mistake. <laughs> but people are not penalized for making mistakes. Politics and bureaucracy are two enemies that I read out. Every organization has some level of politics, but we will see in our organization, I try to dismiss politics and bureaucracy to what extent they can. I want everybody to come in, play his best game, communicate in a fearless, courageous manner. And that's how, that's how the company moves ahead. That's what motivates people. So Vignesh, you gave us a real good insight on how you manage your team and work. But to know more about your business and industry, we surely need to head to the business centre here, which gives us the vibe and the environment where we can go and talk to our business sure, and the journey. Sure, to it. So let's go and explore. So Vignesh, we are here at the business centre. So let's talk some business and understand okay. from you the real uh, meaning of ROI, especially when you talk about in insurance company, insurance sector where you have really aced it up for many, many years. How do we understand ROX or ROI when it comes to insurance company? I think ROI is passe. It's yeah. now ROX. Yeah. Uh, especially it's extremely critical in, a, in an industry like insurance where I don't know how much you know about insurance, but yes. it's a pretty commoditized industry. Yes. Everyone has the same products, everyone has the same processes. So how do you differentiate? I think you differentiate through experience you give your customers, through the experience you give your distributors, through the experience you give your employees. So I think ROX in a commoditized, it's important everywhere, but in a commoditized industry like insurance, it's paramount. So how difficult it gets for you to create that experience? Like, is it like you have to strategize particularly for ROX now? In insurance to Not really. I, th I think the word ROX has just been coined recently. Yeah. But you know, there were words like customer sensitivity, employee friendliness, or customer management, satisfaction. customer distributor of satisfaction, which were floating around for many years. But what does it mean? It all yeah. means ROX. It all yes. means their experience with your service and the experience you give them. So is it like something which is a term that we have started using much more frequently? I think I think everybody it's 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 a term which is newly yeah. coined, but I think uh, it was being used in various uh, in under various names for a long time now. So coming from the insurance space, we always know that it is not an easy industry per se. How do you tell us your experience of uh, you know getting to that success level in the insurance company, getting that name fame, called the successful? person representing the insurance company, been a CEO for a decade and more. The insurance industry, you're right. You're rightly said, Anko, it's very competitive. There are 25 players and 70% of the market share is one monopolistic yes. supply, which is LIC. The industry has to be competitive. Having said that, I think we have a long way to go as EGS Federal. We've had a stop and start journey, but we've been, our aspiration is not to be in the top 10 biggest companies or the top five largest companies, but we want to be an admired company. We want to be a profitable company. We want to be a great company to invest in, to work for, and to buy from. Be very clear. If it means being number 15, so be it. But we don't want to sacrifice customer experience, employee satisfaction, or employee experience 
and share the experience. Yes. That is something we don't want to compromise on. But are there parameters so, at all that that you said that these are the parameters, basis which ROX is assured, like these are the basic parameters set to bring out that satisfaction for your customers and your people? See, the insurance uh, industry can be, the results for each company can be sliced yeah. and diced in different ways. Yes. But to the parameters that you're asking for, what is the important parameter is profits yeah. and the dividends you get. True. So that's a parameter for shareholders. For, shareholders. for employees, we have various surveys to understand behavioral level of employee engagement. You know, in the last survey we did, we were we were voted the best place to work, yeah. greatest place to work for the sixth, sixth or seventh in a row. That's and that person told me that, you know, Vignesh, well done. You know, last year it was 65% engagement and now you're at 70% engagement. So I said 70% engagement is not good enough. Yes. Can you imagine a cricket team of 10 people, 11 people having only 7 people who want to win? Yes. They're not going to win. Not gonna They're not going to win unless push. everybody wants to win. So that is the ultimate aim. And distributor and uh, customer. customer. And we measure customer uh, parameters we use to measure customer experience are many. It starts at the point of sale. It always starts at the point of sale. And then we invest in largely in digitalization and IT yes. to enhance the customer experience, to reduce turnaround times, to ease the customer's onboarding process. And we all measure it all through an NPS score. Okay. We, we, we have NPS scores at various customer touch points and we measure and we track our progress against these NPS scores. So across every category, whether it's shareholder, employee, distributor, customer, Custom. we are tracking our progress. So there is a design method to there's, approach this. There is there's a science. There is, it's not a hit and run. There is a science. We know where we want to be. And we are very focused on that's what we want. We don't get distracted by what's happening, the noise happening around us. We and that's focus what we designing it in a specific... Because otherwise you can go all over the place. Yeah. I mean, you can choose top line, you can choose profitability, you can choose... Uh, Whatever personally. works to get it is not the way you... Yeah, but okay. we said that we have to have the employee filter, we have to have the customer filter, we have to have the shareholder filter and what we do. We cannot be overawed or overwhelmed by, say IT, we cannot be overwhelmed and overawed by digitalization yes. and just do it. It's a means to an end. It is a means to an end. It's not an end in itself. It is not an end. So we have to put the customer filter, the, uh, the employee experience filter, the shareholder experience filter in every activity we do. Otherwise, so the, you can get bailey. So with the clarity you're giving, I want to understand one more aspect of you. Yeah. How important, according to you, is the workspace relatable or uh, your living space relatable to the productivity, the end result? Do you think I'll, it is? I'll, I'll just give one example, Anshu. Uh, we had COVID for two years. Yes. Okay. Work from home and hybrid model remained popular for a yes. long time. Why did that happen? Because people went for staycations, people went back home, people went to their parents' house, people they got into the, the native village, they got into the comfort zone. And there's still you that home space experience enhances, if you have a positive experience, if you have a positive vibe at home, it enhances productivity. Just say, why did it work from home? And at least our company and our industry, the productivity, they, they be actually did well in the two years we are closer. So I really don't know why we need people in office. If they're more productive working from home or wherever they're comfortable, so be it. But then, you know, we need them to come to office to maintain a certain discipline. True. So that's one thing. On the personal front, I have changed, I changed home twice in the last 10 years. Wow. And I can, that's I can tell short. you for sure, this is personally speaking, I can tell you for sure that Home makes a big difference in your productivity. It, the ambience at home, the everything from the lighting to the brightness to the vibe, to the experience you get when you ring your doorbell and somebody opens the front door, it's, it's out of the world. In fact, I'm more productive on Saturday and Sunday when I'm at home wow. than I'm in office. So that's how important it is. So this you realize but now or you always... Uh, no, I'm, I've, all, I've realized, always, no, I've always wondered why I'm more productive on a Saturday and Sunday when I'm at home. And yes. then the answer is, I'm so comfortable at home. I'm, I've, I've, I have great experience at home. We have to take cognizance of the fact that in Bombay, real estate is expensive. Yes. Houses are small. Yes. Travel time is lot. So the, the entire experience home to office is could be a little challenging for most people. True. So we have to ensure that we have to have a great experience given to people in office. Yes. If they get it home in office, well and good. How and do you, you think that is great? 
So if you come to a new office and we were we were at Kamla Mills uh, yes. and we just shifted about six or seven years back, it's a very happy, cheerful and you know, very positive vibe. See, an employee spends more time in office than at home. True. So it's essential that if we can't get the experience at home, we provide it to an yes. office because that enhances productivity. So, you know, you said a very nice line about how a house or your workspace can add to the real success story. You have had a journey which is really successful, at least how we measure it. So we are very thankful to you for today taking out time from your busy schedule and sharing insights and bringing some value addition to understanding life value experience and you know return on experience is relatable to your work and the living space. So thank you so much Vignesh for giving us this time and making us more worthwhile to understand and correlate everything. Thanks for having me here. Thank you, Vignesh, for Thanks sparing for time for this episode. Concluding this episode, I would like to express my gratitude for Mr. Vignesh Sahane, who took out time from his busy schedule and shared such valuable insights with us. As we say goodbye, keep in mind that your home is more than a physical space. It is an architect of success and a sanctuary of productivity. This is Anko Goel signing off from 25 South, one of India's most luxurious living places where every corner speaks opulence and elegance. Wishing you all a productive and fulfilling journey ahead.